Okay, part two of The Boy Who Drew Birds, a story of John James Audubon. John James went to his bookcase and took down the natural history book, Gifts from His Father. Where do small birds go in the winter? Do the same birds come back to the same nests each spring? The scientists who wrote these books did not agree. Each one gave a different answer. 2,000 years before, the Greek philosopher Aristotle had given his answers to those questions. Aristotle said that every fall, great flocks of cranes flew south and returned in the spring, but he believed that small birds did not migrate. Small birds, wrote Aristotle, hibernated under water or in hollow logs all winter. Many scientists of the day still agreed with Aristotle. Small birds, they said, gathered themselves in a great ball, clinging beak to beak, wing to wing, and foot to foot, and lay under water all winter, frozen-like. Fishermen even told stories of catching such tangles of birds in their nests. John James had never, ever found a tangled ball of birds under water. And he did not believe everything the scientists said. Why, some of them believed that birds transformed from one kind into another each winter. And one scientist claimed that birds traveled to the moon each fall and returned in the spring. He said the trip took 60 days. John James had never spent time much time inside a classroom, and he had failed every test he had taken in school, but he considered himself a naturalist. He studied birds and nature to learn their habits and behaviors. I will bring my books to the, to the cave, John James decided, and my pencils and paper. I will even bring my flute. I will study my cave birds every day. I will draw them just as they are, and because he was a boy who loved the outdoors more than the inn, that is just what he did. In a week, the birds were used to him. They ignored him as, they, as if he were an old stump. They carried bits of moist mud as he drew with his pencils. They brought in tufts of green moss as he read his French fables. They gathered stray goose feathers from the banks of the creek as he played songs on his flute. Soon, the dried brown nest had become a soft green bed, and John James had learned to imitate the throaty calls of the birds. Phoebe! Phoebe! Not sure how that would sound. Spring slipped into summer. Summer sighed and became fall. John James watched as two broods of nestlings hatched. He watched as the young birds flew for the first time. He began to feel a part of this small family. When the days grew shorter and the autumn air began to bite, John James knew the birds would leave soon. But would they come back? He had to know. The question was terribly imp important to the boy so far from his family. In bed that night, he formed a plan. What do you think his plan is going to be? The next day, when the mother and father birds were away from the nest, John James picked up one of the baby birds. He had read of medieval kings who tied bands on the legs of their prize falcons so that a lost falcon could be returned. Why not band a wild bird to find out where it goes? It had never been done, but John James could try. He pulled a string from his pocket and tied it loosely around the baby bird's leg. The bird pecked it off. The next day, he tried another string tied another string to the bird's leg. Again, <laughs> the bird pecked it off. Finally, John James walked five miles to the nearest village and bought some thread woven of fine strands of silver. 
This thread was soft and strong. He tied a piece of it loosely to one leg of each baby bird. A week later, the birds were gone. That looks like pages torn out of his notebook of him sketching and writing notes. And then it's showing him watch them fly away maybe. All winter, James, John James worked in his musée, painting the pencil, pencil sketches he had made in the cave. He hoped that on his next birthday, he would have one or two pictures worth saving from the fire. Do you remember earlier? He burns his pictures because he thinks they're not good enough. The creek was frozen now, and each time John James skated past the empty cave, he thought of the 2,000-year-old question. Where do small birds go, and do they return to the same nest in spring? Do you think he'll find out the answer? The days grew longer. The ice on the creek cracked and melted. Hmm, what's the author trying to tell us? The days grew longer. The ice on the creek cracked and melted. It's getting warmer. One morning, John James heard a bird call. Phoebe! Phoebe! He ran to the cave. He ducked his head and stepped inside. The female bird did not fly out of the cave like an arrow shot from a bow. The male bird did not beat his wings above John James' head and snap his beak. Instead, they ignored John James as if he were an old stump. Watching the birds fly in and out of the cave, John James knew that his friends had returned. But where were last year's babies, now grown? Had they returned too? He began to search the woods and orchard nearby, listening for their calls. Out of the meadow inside a hay shed, he found two birds building a nest. One wore a silver thread around its leg. Up the creek under the bridge, he found two more nesting birds and one wore a silver thread around its leg. John James wanted to shout, yes, the same birds returned to the same nest and their children nest nearby. But who would have heard him? I will write to my father, he decided. I will tell him what I have learned in America. Do you remember where his family is? In France? And when I am older, I will find a way to tell the whole world. He ran back to his house to gather his pencils, paper, and flute. He, as he ran, he called, Phoebe! Phoebe! And there's a letter he's starting to write. Ooh, that looks like cursive handwriting. And that is the end. And this is all about the author. And I will read that on another video. But did he get his answer? And did he find a way to answer his question? Okay, I will um, videotape more about the author later. I hope you guys are having a great day.